us talking about being virtual. Let's we'll see if we can get Heather Graham back in here. All right. Hello, hello. So sorry. I got completely disconnected. Oh, we were just discussing being virtual and some of the challenges associated. And here we are getting, having to deal with, <laughs> having to deal with connection issues already. It's on my end. It's completely on my end. I'm so sorry. Hello. I got panicked. I was like, oh shoot. Sometimes <laughs> my Wi-Fi or like Netflix or I don't know, all that things that might be going at the same time. I don't know, whatever. We're here. It's well, and like I live in rural Missouri, so my internet is just like, oh, you don't need me anymore, bye. Just randomly. Definitely. So, <laughs> so you were just saying about how different it is to be teaching in this virtual environment. So, <laughs> and I just thought it was so funny. It kind of decided to use that moment. <laughs> yeah, I had to glitch out and teach us a lesson. I think so what are some of the things that you've learned as far as like teaching on virtual versus teaching in person that's yeah. different? I think you got to try to put yourself in the student's shoes and make sure you are like in the best environment that you can be, whether that be in a gym or outside or whatever. I just think it's hard to communicate in the first place of just learning from a video because color guard, of course, you have to learn it outside. So can you speak as loud as you can? Can you utilize like uh, labels in the video to make it easier? How can you communicate the count structure to them? Like, can you count over the music for them? And that's something just trying to be as detailed as possible and always face away from the camera as well. So they feel comfortable like actually learning and following along with something. I think that virtual learning is so much more difficult than in-person learning, especially when you're talking about hand grabs or like talking about the weight of something and uh, how much easier it would be to be able to explain it in person. So, I mean, the videos that I make just breaking down choreography for short, short little clips, maybe 40 seconds of choreography might be like anywhere between 13 and 17 minutes of me just talking through the part and making sure I do it and kind of run it like I'm in a rehearsal and also including bloopers and like maybe not me not being the best. Maybe like I don't really try to include any drops, but um, maybe if there's like an under rotation or a stumble, I like to just be silly like I would in person, you know, so that it feels uh, more genuine and you're not just like watching a video that I don't know some like instructional video that would remind you of school I want it to feel as like myself as possible you know because that's like what I love so much about teaching is being able to interact with the personalities of people so it's weird just to talk to the screen and I'm like cracking myself up trying to be like haha yeah right okay <laughs> I look crazy awesome let me try that again so why did the wind take that? I just said, I just missed it. You know, like, I love yeah. that whole idea of just the process of letting them see you make mistakes. Because sometimes like kids get so frustrated with themselves and not like wanting to be perfect right away that a lot of times like they'll give up rather than work at it. And they have to see that you work at it. And I love that you I love that you're taking that into account as you're doing this. Yeah, I think it's I just got to feel as like friendly as possible, you know, because if you're going to spend a bunch of time and hours and money just to put some like effort forth, I think that the more fun, the better, because we're all in like the dark place. If you're if we're just honest in the relative scope of our normal life, <laughs> it is all <laughs> off and awkward and random. So. So that being said, we have another uh, question from a viewer from Danny. It says, how do you build your program's confidence to, to try tricks? So Ooh. how do you get your kids to try new things, basically? Yeah, I think that you have to break it down first, the body skill. And I think so often people tend to go right to trying for the toss and like instantly trying to do it. And the best thing to do for tricks right off the bat is put your equipment down and like 
understand the timing of things. So count through the trick itself. For a sit roll, like you're gonna toss on one, you're gonna put your leg down, make sure you're putting it in the right plane. So you roll to the side, see how far you roll and like market it with whatever. Are you on carpet? Is there like some lines you can roll from place to place so you know how far you have to throw? And just like really thinking of how to do the proper body skill, because that is so important. And then once you add in the tosses, like you don't necessarily have to do tricks under a rifle or saber for the first time. It could literally be anything. It could be a drumstick. Like it could be a baton. It could be, I don't know, whatever. My dad used to make me, uh, he would like try to be funny and I would do like two turns under bags of M&Ms. Like, cause I was trying to build up my confidence to do it under fire, fire baton. And he'd be like, well, just do it under M&Ms. Like, you can catch that. You can catch fire. So I think it's, like, just do it under stuff. Because it doesn't really matter what is flying above you. It just matters that you get used to, like, throwing something, doing something, and then looking for it to catch it. And I think that is another important thing is, like, when you explain skills, even if you can't do the skill yourself, which obviously is, like, the best when you have a teacher that can just, like, do the right. skill yourself, you know? And that's probably where my kids have gotten a little bit luckier because I like, that's what I like the most is I love doing tricks. I, and that's exactly where it falls in the baton twirling spectrum, you know, right back to all of that. Yeah. Eminem line, baby. <laughs> oh, Logan. Um, Eminem but line, let's go. yeah, I just think that it's so important that you count through the toss and then you always count through the toss and you always count through the trick and you understand I'm looking on forehand or I need to move my left foot to catch behind my back on the hand count before and you really break down like when you need to move to catch the equipment before just going hog wild and another thing is like when you're trying to do skills and you're doing stuff I think it's great to just loft it in the air like it doesn't matter that you try a toss illusion you could do it on like the loftiest quad in your life because all that matters is you're just like getting used to doing the skill and then you can start trying to put the technique through it but so often body skills are so much more important than the trick itself because if you can actually execute the body skills and do it quickly and efficiently then you'll be able to feel far more comfortable with the toss and the trick together so have you ever spun a broom at home for practice mm, I don't know what the weirdest thing I would spin like I've spun like um gardening tools like digging tools I like to do those things with good weight my parents always had the brooms in the closet so I spin like gift wrap at Christmas time I enjoy that that's good weight to juggle definitely that's always fun <laughs> Okay, let's see. I've got some more. How are all of your students so flexible? Uh, so I get, <laughs> do you have a lot I of gymnasts on your team? Question. I do. Okay. Boston, they just come that way. Um, <laughs> they just come that way. And I think it's just important to stretch all the time, you know? So I think yeah. at Miamisburg, they start at a very young age. So we're very lucky that they start in like as early as kindergarten. So they are doing color guard in the fall and the winter. That's two like times five years week. old? Yes. Like I have some seniors who are in their 13th year. That's amazing. And they just stick with it for a very long time. So what we're lucky with is like people who are really good weapons or really good flags are also very good just movers and dancers. I give a lot of credit to Scott Winters, who was the director at Miamisburg before me, because he would always make those girls stretch um, back bends and splits. And then Lauren Drizzlane, who was at Miamisburg with me for, this is my ninth year and she was here for seven of them. So she was an incredible dance teacher for us. And they, I just made it a huge priority when I became the director um, to just dance every day and to stretch every day for a long period of time. Even if we had a lot of stuff to get done, very rarely still, well, I mean, pandemic, I could stretch all day if I wanted to, but right. 
very rarely still, even like in the winter time, unless we are staging with Michael Townsend, we would just dance and stretch and work on all of that stuff for the first like 45 minutes to an hour always. And I think that that just allows you to, yes, become more flexible, but then also have like your flags and your rifles and your sabers and the dancers have a similar body quality because you just spent a lot of time on it. So that would make your, your cleaning when you get down to the equipment stuff easier too, because they already understand, okay, when you just say chasse, they're already going to all do the exact same chasse technique at this point in time and move through it. Like that's a really, that's a really helpful thing, tool for you down the road that they've already got that built underneath them. Definitely. And then I think too, once you start learning like what kind of choreography and stuff you have in your show, you can start just putting that directly into a warm up or an across the floor. So that way you are practicing even just small skills and combinations that are important to you other places than just like the eight counts that it is in your show. Right. So you teach Miamisburg yes. um, and you teach Boston in the summer. Yes. And you teach a university too, if I'm right? Yeah, so I teach University of Cincinnati. Um, okay. And I've been there for a long, long time. And then I also am helping out at the University of Miami, which is in Oxford, not Florida, Oxford, Ohio. So. <laughs> okay. And then I teach a bunch of other places, um, either virtually or in person when we were in person, um, right. random places in the country, so. And you're also doing the um, the Designs by King skills. Are you working on that still? How's that going? Yes. So I help out King and I'm an ambassador for them, which has been fun during this quarantine time. And I and Scott King were talking and just wanted to make skills more available for people. So every week I just go outside and like pick some random behind the back skills or under the leg skills or a triple exercise and just try to speak about this like exercise or combination for about I don't know seven to ten minutes not too long but just a little bit more than like here's a trick and I'll teach you it in a minute you know I I'm just trying to give like some variety so maybe we can offer it for people who are of different skill levels and just for people who are bored and if they want to go try it they can try it um, and we started featuring people on the King Instagram, which has been really cool. Just people that utilize the King product. I've used King ever since I switched into world class, which um, I just love the product. And I'm lucky that I get like my own rifle. I got a brand new <laughs> rifle from him. I'm so lucky, but just having fun with it. I'm just trying to uh, give as many tips and hints and tricks and whatever that I can, especially just when we're all at home on our cell phones. So. Well, and I, I know I really appreciate it as myself because, you know, as a teacher, you can't just like learn one way of doing things and then use that way forever and ever. So like for me, I've been kind of watching your, your videos and going, oh, well, that's how she explains it. Or, oh, well, and kind of getting that perspective of, okay, I could approach it this way with my students, you know, because there are times when I'm like, man, how do I get them to catch that behind the back the way I want them to? Or how do I get them to do this specific thing the way I want them to? They're not understanding. And having a multitude of ways to be able to do that, to be able to explain it in such, with such variety is so good. And I think that's something I didn't realize when I was, when I was a young instructor first starting out. I just kind of thought, well, I have my way of doing things and this is just going to work because this is what would have worked with me when I was young. And it's like, everybody's different. And every, I'm sure you've seen a lot of differences between the teams you teach, you know, and just seeing all those, the variety of how people understand things. It's really great to be able to have that resources, even as an instructor to yeah. help each other learn better and, and learn how to teach better. Yeah. I think that that is something that, we don't really get exposed to very much because we never get to be in other people's rehearsals either too. So it's like, you might get lucky if you catch someone's like last little bit, if you happen to be watching the rehearsal or drum corps rehearsal or whatever. But yeah, I guess I didn't think about that. And I think that is like something that is fun and hopefully I'm improving on as that's like what I was talking about for a virtual marching band and virtual drum corps of just, how to better communicate with people through a cell phone and not in person. And I mean, the bloopers that come from the King videos sometimes <laughs> are hilarious, whether it be like 
one of the neighborhood children at my apartment just like running through the video in front <laughs> of me or a car stopping and asking me like why I have a sword or something and I'm like okay someone asked me if I train people to fight the other day and I'm like no I don't but I could I guess I uh, yeah really exactly. long one I could get a long one and start battling but yeah so <laughs> it's good blooper reel too for me <laughs> Oh, that I mean, it could be useful, useful skills over time. You never know. Definitely. Yeah, we don't know where we're going. So I might need to start learning how to train people to fight. We yeah. might need to be ready for some sort of Corona zombie apocalypse or something. Yeah, 2020. Well, it has been so awesome talking to you. I really appreciate you giving your time to come and chat with me about all this stuff. Uh, this has been really awesome. And I just like, like I said, I really, I love watching your stuff and I really appreciate you putting so many things out there. Um, but I need to get going and I hope you absolutely have just a lovely night. Thank you. You too. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Anytime. Absolutely. Bye. Bye.